Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon and welcome to Asian Review. I'm your host, Lily Ong, hosting all the way from Singapore Changi Airport today. We have with us today Mr. To Bao Ju, he's the Vice President of Operations at Singapore Changi Airport. Welcome to the show, Mr. To. Thank you, Lily. Thanks for inviting. You're welcome. And uh, Mr. To, I know that since 1981, Singapore Changi Airport has garnered over 500 accolades, and 2015 alone, it had received 28 Best Airport Awards. That's right. um, I'm sure there's uh, collaborations of factors that went into making this airport the best airport year after year. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps you could talk to us about some of the tangibles and intangibles. Uh, what went into making this such a great airport? Right. Um, could we perhaps start with the facilities? All right, okay. Uh, so talking about the hardware in Chang Airport, we actually invest in a lot of uh, infrastructure in the sense that uh, we bring um, gardens indoor because Singapore is actually a garden city. Mm -hmm. So what we like to do is actually we want to bring uh, our passengers uh, to a lot of uh, uh, garden features. So we have the butterfly garden in Terminal 3, we have a cactus garden in Terminal 1, a sunflower garden in Terminal 2. And of course, we have orchid gardens, we have enchanted gardens. So all these actually bring life uh, to the airport because the greenery actually softens the touch uh, of the airport. So it makes it a bit, a little more stress-free for our passengers when they travel through the airport. Uh, in addition, we actually have an outdoor swimming pool. Uh, so uh, we are trying to target some of our transit passengers. So you know, if they have a layover of about say five hours, actually it's quite nice to go to the pool and have a swim before they actually catch the next flight out of mm -hmm. Singapore. Now you mentioned there's um, so many gardens. I imagine you have a lot of gardeners working here 24-7. Yes, yes and, we do. And plant specialists too. Uh, we have uh, actually a horticultural team. Uh, they specialize uh, in, in plants. Uh, that's actually within uh, Chang Airport Group. And of course we have our vendors to help us look after the plants and we'll do the watering every day. So what's the size of some of these gardens that you mentioned? Uh, the size could be as good as uh, a basketball court mm. uh, type of size that uh, you're looking at. Mm -hmm. mm. And how many species of butterflies can we expect oh, to find? Uh, or just, uh, just an estimate? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's hard, but I guess we, uh -huh. we breed our own butterflies, so we have our own incubator, and then we release them after nine days, if I can recall correctly the, the incubation period. Uh, if I can recall correctly, maybe over 20 different butterfly species that we have here. Wow, and yeah. I'm sure there's a reason that goes into choosing certain flowers, like sunflowers and orchids. Yes, yes, of course, uh, we look at the weather element in Singapore. Uh, so I think these are the flowers that actually can sustain. And of mm -hmm. course, uh, some of the uh, gardens are outdoor and some are indoor. So for indoors, I think we have to look into the lights, uh, the provisioncy of natural lights and of course uh, artificial lights to make sure that the, grow, the plants can thrive and grow in, in the airport. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's some um, swimming pool. This is the, the only one I've I'd heard of all the, all the airports yes. I've been to. And I've been to probably over 80 airports in the right. world. Um, this is on a rooftop, you said? It's on uh, in Terminal 1, yes, it's on the uh, higher level. So it's a rooftop uh, open air swimming pool. Is it accessible only to passengers in uh, transit? Any, yes, only for passengers in the transit. And it's actually a paid service, uh, which is quite reasonable. So if you have a good long hours of layovers, uh, it's actually quite nice to go for a swim out in the, uh, you know, and get some fresh air. And to get a suntan and when you're get a on suntan, transit, exactly, right? Yes, exactly. And just like some of the top airports, I'm sure there's shower facilities Yes, and we do have that. shower facilities. and uh, in in addition, we have two cinema, a movie theater, so mm. you can actually catch uh, one of the latest screenings mm -hmm. uh, while waiting for your flight. And, and just a moment, with the, with the swimming pool, what if I forget to bring my swimsuit? Yeah, Do you guys still... Just flight, a moment. SC it's okay. to London is a delay due to operational requirement. The estimated time of departure will be 13, 15 hours, 1.15 p.m. You know, I really appreciate this kind of uh, announcement because if my flight is getting delayed, I would like to be informed. So this is right. good. Yeah. yeah. So okay, back to back, the, back to the swimming pool. Mm -hmm. Yes, I guess you can rent uh, um, equipment and uh, you know uh, towers uh, from from the vendor that actually manages the. Uh, swimming pool. Because mm, I bet a lot of passengers didn't know that there's actually a swimming pool right, right here that's in right, the Changi right, Airport. Right, yeah. Yeah. And what other facilities are there? So we have uh, a movie theatre, like I said, we have two uh, movie theatres, one in Terminal 2 and one in Terminal 3. Uh, so it actually shows one of the latest screenings, so you actually can catch uh, you know, your favourite movies as uh, you wait for your departing flight. Do you provide popcorns too? Uh, we don't, but you can get popcorns uh, <laughs> uh, in the airport. Right. Um, of course, in addition, we do have uh, a lot of uh, playgrounds and play stations for our uh, passengers, especially for uh, families with little children. So, so we have very nice, uh, of course, it's safe. Uh, playground uh, which they get, they get to enjoy. And what, is some of the, what are some of the playground facilities? I heard about this taller slide in a... Uh, yes, we, we have a taller slide. This is not a landslide, so that's also uh, 
allowed for non-traveling passengers to, to use as well. So that's one of the tallest slides that we have. So it's quite easy. You, you just need to spend, I think, it's about $10. You get a coupon and you can just hop onto the slide. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, as you must qualify for the certain height limits. And mm -hmm. once you are eligible, yeah, you can actually enjoy the slide, mm -hmm. which is quite popular, especially on weekends. And yeah. how many other little small playgrounds? We, we have small playgrounds. I think last year we refreshed uh, one of our playgrounds with put in the Hello Kitty team uh, mm. because Hello Kitty is actually quite popular in Singapore. So we actually have that um, playground uh, built with uh, you know the, the char characters from the from from Sario, uh, characters. Mm -hmm. So this is what we do. And uh, in the in the transit side, we have uh, pretty uh, big uh, setups for for playgrounds, uh, which I think they are, they are small nets. You know, they can allow kids to climb up and down. Mm -hmm. uh, and for the little bit of soft touch, sometimes we actually have our uh, Changi Experience agents that can help to look after the kids while the parents go shopping. Are those the ones that I've seen that's wielding these iPads, walking around in purple and yes, pink places? Right, right. Yes, okay. that's right. So the, uh, we have two types of uh, rov uh, agents. One is on the, in, in managing all the info counters and the other one are roving agents where they actually help passengers in distress if let's like, say they got caught uh, in, the, in the transit not knowing what to do and uh, these uh, roving agents can assist them. So I can go up to them essentially course, if I lose my baggage or yeah, if yeah. I want to know where, where to, to, go. to grab a yes, cup of exactly, coffee. Exactly. Wonderful. Okay. So other facilities that we have in the airport is we do have massage chairs. Uh, so they're all free for use and no need to put any coins. Oh, uh, wonderful. To, yeah, so they're all free to use and they are dotted across the entire terminals, uh, all the three, all the four terminals in the airport. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what we do to really create that. And the these are the high-end high OC massage these chairs? These are the OC massage chairs. Right. Yeah, so we, we work with them and then we put them uh, across. And then certain terminals actually have a full body massage uh, but those, those are paid service? Those are also free. Oh, also free? Oh, free, yes. Oh, yes. As wow. long as it's OC machine and then it's part of Changi Airport, it's, it's, uh, it's available for free of use for by our passengers. Wonderful. And I saw that there's a Schiller um, Beauty Lab that offers free makeovers. That's right, they do. Um, free makeovers for passengers. Even in Terminal 3, we have um, a bar. Uh, it's actually uh, the managed by the, the Raffles uh, Long Bar. Mm -hmm. So they actually can uh, concord the, the Singapore Sling for you if you're departing. Of course, that's after the uh, after three hours, I mean, after 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, when you depart, you can just show your boarding pass and get a free, free drink on us. A free Singapore Sling? A free Singapore wow. Sling. Okay. Wow, yeah. and that's from the authentic Raffles Bar. That's really, that's wow. really And I read about um, that's also a whiskey bar? Yes, there is a whiskey bar. I think they are kind of uh, together. So, uh, mm -hmm. of course, uh, you know, there is also uh, some distillations I can see mm -hmm. uh, how this, this, uh, this uh, whiskey is being made. Mm -hmm. I, did, I did read that there's over 100 uh, types of whiskey that's, that's right. being sold there. That's right. that's and right. this is a great location because you're receiving a lot of high-end customers and, and so many right. nationalities too. Yes. Yeah. And is it true that only um, Changi is chosen as the particular location to sell um, special concoction of whiskey? Uh, um, I think it's a combination of uh, different reasons, but I guess it's also the availability of a space because uh, even though the airport is big, but we are running out of real estate space. So if right. anything that we can find, we will work with uh, our vendor to try and put it up. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and of course, to serve our passengers. Right. Well, I had to imagine this place running out of space because this is so spacious. How big exactly is Changi Airport? Actually, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know how big uh, the exact size, but uh, the, in terms of capacity, uh, for all the four terminals, we can manage up to 85 million passengers per year. So, the, how many? 85 million passengers 85 per, million per annual. passenger, and that's including the latest, the latest Terminal, terminal 4. 4, yes, terminal right. 4. Right. So, which are the different airlines that are coming through? Are there, and is, is there a particular terminal that's dedicated to Singapore Airlines? Uh, yes, Singapore Airlines, are, they fly out of Terminal 2 and 3, mm -hmm. uh, so it depends on the destination. So, for shorter destinations within uh, Southeast Asia, they, they depart from Terminal 2, whereas the long-haul flights are out from Terminal 3. And I know that one of the very competitive arm is the budget airlines. Do they have a terminal that's dedicated to just the budget uh, airlines? In the past, yes, but, uh, um, but in 2012, we, 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 we removed the budget terminal and then actually all, all the uh, low-cost carriers start to move into the main terminal. Mm -hmm. So across all the four terminals, you do see uh, low-cost uh, carriers uh, operating out of these terminals. Mm -hmm. And there is a Terminal 5 that's um, in the works, isn't it? Yes, it's in the progress of building the Terminal 5. For, so of course we projected in about 10 to 15 years from now that uh, mm -hmm. they will come into operations. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are currently building the third runway uh, so that we do see the demand of mm -hmm. uh, air traffic coming into, into Singapore. Right, yeah. I don't know what's the current hectares, but I know that with Terminal 5 it's going to grow up to 100 hectares yes, yes. and serving um, easily over 100, 150 million passengers. 150 per million. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's what we're targeting. Yep. Wow, perfect. Well, Mr. Tao, thank you so much. We're going to take a little break here, and when we come back, we can go into some of the service sure, um, sure. that you provide here. Okay, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you.
Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, and I'm here every other week on Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Together. In Hawaii Together, we talk with some of the most fascinating people in the islands about working together, working together for a better economy, government, and society. So I invite you into our conversation every other Monday at 2 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Join us for Hawaii Together. I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Welcome back to Asian Review. I'm your host, Lily Ong, and we're here today at Singapore Changi Airport. Welcome back to the show, Mr. To. Hi. Well, Mr. To, um, this is more than an airport. This is essentially a shopping paradise. What are some of the shops that we can find here? Right, we recently opened uh, the Louis Vuitton, so it's one of the two only Louis Vuittons in the airport. And that's right there. And that's right at the back. <laughs> uh, so it's beautiful setup. Uh, of course, right in front of the Louis Vuitton, we have a crystal garden. Uh, if you can see the picture, uh, it's, it's a beautiful uh, set of crystals and of course with a very striking uh, blue carpet mm -hmm. that goes with it. So that's Louis Vuitton. Of course we have Hermes, we have Chanel. Is that um, Crystal Garden, is that sponsored by Louis Vuitton or that's separate? Uh, that's a separate one. That's separate, that's a, yeah. alright. Okay, so we have of course Hermes, uh, we have uh, you know, some of the big brands, uh, YSL, we have uh, Zagna. Um, so these are the high-end brands that. And we how's have. the prices compared to? I mean, would I rather shop here or would I go? It's downtown? definitely cheaper than in the city because uh, we don't have uh, the uh, the goods and services tax mm -hmm. uh, over imposed in the airports because these are in the transit area, so it's a tax-free zone. And uh, do you know how the prices compared to say Europe or right, America? I think it all depends on your exchange rate, but so far I think Singapore is pretty competitive. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do get a lot of uh, passengers are uh, purchasing products here. Mm -hmm. I, and I understand from the Louis Vuitton that they actually have special product just for Singapore. Just Chinese for Singapore. Airport. Right. Yeah, and I imagine you get the latest in the line as well. I would think so, yes. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So, so these are the, the services that we have, or the shopping that we have. Of course, we have a lot of F&B outlets and we try to cater to different needs. Uh, so we have Chinese restaurants, we have uh, Malay uh, uh, Hala restaurants and we do have Indian uh, well, vegetarian mm -hmm. restaurants as well. Uh, different tiers so that we can cater to different needs of our passengers. So we do have a food court style where uh, the prices are more affordable and of course then we move on to, uh, to actually a, a more mid higher tier of uh, restaurants in, in the airport. Mm -hmm. Do you have an estimate of how many restaurants there are? It's just, I know it's so, it seems <laughs> so countless and there's so many choices. I think that's easily over 100 food outlets uh, mm -hmm. in the airport. That's right. right. And even the um, the lounges here are some of the best I've been to. Um, for example, the SQ Lounge, they serve a lot of local variety that's right. too. That's yeah, right. that's really special. That's right. Yeah. Um, so, w which is your favorite restaurant here? I guess you're not allowed to say that. Uh, well, it's, it's hard because I think the variety is, it depends on really the mood that I like, but I think uh, it really caters to, because I work here, so sometimes I, you know, I need a sandwich, I actually have easy go to a sandwich bar. If I need a Chinese noodle, there's something available. So I think it's just uh, a, a great variety that I think even I personally have been working here for, for the last four years, uh, I, I will never get sick of the food here. Mm -hmm. Well, I think Changi's um, glory goes beyond the local airport. Uh, you guys are also helping to uh, help to set up and manage the, some of the airport in the Krasnada region in Russia. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us more about that? Yes, please? we do have a subsidiary. It's called Changi Airport International. So what they do is uh, they actually manage airports outside Changi. Uh, outside of Singapore, so Russia is, uh, I think they have four airports that they are mm -hmm. managing. Uh, so of course we also do management contract and then JEDA was uh, the other airport that was recently signed and do management, uh, so that was, uh, you know, the, these are some of the projects that they have uh, abroad. So Sochi Airport was actually um, Yes, Sochi assisted. Airport, uh, yes, uh, it was actually one of the airport that uh, part of the CAI uh, S investment. Set. So CAI was very involved in helping it to get ready for the Olympics. For the Olympics, for the yeah, Olympics. that was about six years ago, if I can right. recall correctly. Yeah. yeah, wow, wonderful. Um, what about, um, you mentioned massage, is there any other extras? I mean, most airports have the basic essentials. What are some of the other extras that you can tell us that kind of put um, Singapore Airport at the forefront? Um, um, I saw some uh, the special decorations, that the kinetic ring. Right, okay, yeah, when it comes to art installations, I think that's something that we are getting a bit more involved. So I think we have uh, the kinetic ring. 
uh, that was in Terminal 1 and it's actually a moving raindrop uh, that, that synchronizes uh, with a certain technology that we work with uh, a German uh, supplier so I think uh, it kind of like moves and, and it creates a very th therapeutic uh, uh, a, a it does. And, 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 yeah, yeah, it does. Of course with that I think in Terminal 4 we have this moving cloud patterns uh, so these cloud patterns will move in a certain pattern and it's actually quite ther therapeutic as well. And in Terminal 2 recently we have uh, put up a, a million time clock so it's actually a very big uh, installations where you see different lines moving together and can tell time uh, in every two minutes ah. and then otherwise they'll just move in a uh, 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 sequential patterns which again is, is it provide a, a bit of wow factor for our passengers mm. and one of the things I cannot help but notice is how well the so sound is contained here this is a huge airport with huge traffic yep. um, but you know I, I see some really large carpet not in all areas but what would you do as far as sound barriers and um, sound minimization is concerned? I, I guess the carpet helps with uh, minimizing some of the noise, but of course I think what we do in the airport is we actually remove some of uh, the non-essential announcements. Uh, say for example, uh, the, the, the flight uh, last call for example, so uh, recently we removed that. Uh, so it makes the, cap, uh, uh, the airport a lot quieter and actually allows a, lo a lot more stress-free uh, travel for our passengers. Uh, of course, if there is some exigencies, for example, the flight gate change, which just now heard, you heard mm -hmm. in the earlier uh, sections, yeah, yeah the, we will make the announcement for that. But uh, otherwise, uh, for, for let's like, say your, your, your flight is going to depart as according to schedule, we will avoid making the counter announcements. Mm -hmm. So that it really reduces the noise level. The right. Conditions. And I'm looking at this, I'm sure it's more than just aesthetic. Yeah. Um, does this actually control the amount of natural lighting coming, coming through? Yes, in, in Terminal 3, I think we are trying to do. Uh, to, to be a bit more green in terms of uh, energy conservation. So we, we actually have a, a roof that allows uh, natural light to come in. So we that will rely on the, that will reduce the reliance on uh, the electricity. Uh, of course, unless it, uh, it's, a, it's a day where it's overcast or you know, it gets dark because of rain, then the, the electricity will kick in, the lights will kick in. Otherwise, we use uh, natural light. Does, does every terminal has a particular theme? Uh, so far, I think the newer ones, because Terminal 1 and 2, they are pretty old. Uh, so Terminal 3, I think we, we, we try to use this natural light. And of course, we have this huge green wall uh, that settles between level uh, the departure and arrival level. So anyone in both levels can actually see this huge green wall, uh, which is right above the uh, you carousel. Ma you mentioned oh, but it actually looks very new. Have you guys gone in and done renovations from time to time? Yes, we do. Uh, we do refresh our, our, our terminal. Uh, quite uh, regularly so uh, for terminal one I think we are currently going in an expansion program uh, to fit in this uh, new upcoming project called Jewel which I'll share a little bit more, a little bit more later so terminal wise I'm currently going through a, a, what we call the terminal one expansion and you know, we are looking into terminal two ref, uh, revamp uh, in the next uh, couple of years uh, of course terminal four is the latest uh, addition to the to the whole airport and it was open uh, October last year mm -hmm. so and how long has Term, um, Changi Airport been in operations? Uh, since 1981. So is that the same time as Singapore Airlines? Or? Uh, no, it's they are, they are way longer because we moved uh, from uh, previously from uh, Paya Lebar, there's this Kalang, and then we moved mm -hmm. to Changi, uh, which is on the east coast of uh, the Singapore. Mm -hmm. And over the years, can you share some of the growing pains, some of the things that you decided to do away with, some of the things that you changed to keep up with modern day needs? Right, okay, I think, I guess the, 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 the most common one that's uh, the internet, I guess, you know, we offer, of, of course, uh, offer free Wi-Fi uh, in the airport. I think as with most airports, I think these are the growing needs. And, and we do actually put in a lot of uh, facilities uh, to help with our passengers in terms of wayfindings. We have cures that, you know, by just scanning your, your body passes can tell you exactly where you are and where you're supposed to go. Uh, so in a, in, in, a, in a directional map form, so a digital direction map form. So I thought that will help uh, with the wayfinding. And of course, it's easy for them to, to search uh, certain things are uh, whether shops online um, or even uh, we have an iChangi app that allows you to even do wayfinding uh, mm -hmm. using the app. With the Wi-Fi, I noticed there are kiosks that you know you have to scan your passport for a code to get on a Wi-Fi. Is there a reason to do this extra step? Why not just let them log on? Uh, this on? is actually a requirement with uh, our Ministry of Home Affairs, so mm -hmm. I guess it's a bit of a security, especially after 911, so I, I think see. we have uh, put in this uh, additional precaution. But even though, yes, it's an additional step, but it's a very straightforward and easy step for our mm. passengers. And there are so many cures, so that's just one example. Yeah. Um, I've also seen cures for photo taking yes, and do. cures for customer service yeah. feedback yeah. Um, in the bathroom and just about everywhere. Right. Um, how many clicks do you get for this from this uh, customer service kiosk that we see everywhere? And how often do you look at the data and what do you do about it? Right, uh, we get lots of clicks. I think it, 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 if you put them all together, really goes in, in, in tens of thousands uh, you know, per month. 
Um, so uh, we do we do review our our uh, feedbacks that we get. Say for example, we have this instant feedback systems that we put in almost all the passengers' toilets. So by rating uh, whether you're happy or unhappy with the toilets, uh, it gives us a bit of feedbacks. And uh, it, there are two ways to look at it. One is actually to allow instant uh, feedback that we can uh, address uh, certain issues that passengers give to us instantly. So say for example, if let's say they point that they are unhappy with with the toilet because there's not enough toilet paper. Uh, so by putting that in, oh, so there's an option for them to are, detail, to, to okay. And then we can tell, and then we will send uh, passengers uh, into the toilet. I mean, cleaners into the toilet to to address that. And of course, over time, we collect these data so that we can actually understand which are the toilets that are highly frequent and which uh, one tends to have a bit more issue. Mm -hmm. And toilets aside, where else can we find this customer service kiosk? Uh, in all the information counters as well. So is to rate our our service agent to make sure that they provide a good customer service. So you can actually rate them. If uh, let's say you're unhappy, of course we will ask you why, and then you know just that give a feedback allow us to do trending, and also try to understand maybe not all of the staff are. Are good for customer service uh, and then for staff uh, with the kind of issues we actually do trainings and retraining uh, mm. uh, using the data that we collect. Mm. Well Singapore has an advantage in that the country itself is very multilingual. Mm. What about your customer service staff? Do, uh, do you provide? Uh, yes we do have a certain sets of uh, requirements in terms of uh, languages uh, so we do uh, of course based on our top uh, 10 destinations of travelers coming into Singapore so we try to make sure we have enough uh, you know language speaking uh, ability uh, say for example, we do get a lot of Chinese passengers, so we must make sure that in any every terminal there will be at least one Chinese speaking agent so that they can help to do the translation they need to. And the signs, as I can find in the whole of Singapore, there are signs in different languages. Yes, and we the, do have those were the four languages. Four languages that we have. Yes. Yes, they right. have it in English, Malay, uh, Tamil, Tamil, and African and, Chinese. And Chinese yeah. right. I see. Well, from the time that my plane lands, how soon can I expect to pick up my luggage? Well, that's uh, uh, we will try to be as efficient as we can. So, uh, so the general rule of thumb is uh, the moment that you you arrive and to the time you you bought your taxis or your 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 tour coach, we hope to achieve in less than half an hour. Wow! That's so, right. not even pick up luggage from the time from the time to yes. to, 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 picking to, to pick up your your transport your, wow. your ground transport to leave the airport. So, we hope to achieve that, uh, everything within half an hour. That's fabulous. Um, now, I know airlines sometimes have a penchant for sending our baggages to where we are not going. Uh, what does the Changi do in, in, in terms of helping passengers with retrieving lost baggages? Do you collaborate with the airlines? Yes, we work very closely with the airlines. So, of course, uh, such services is provided by the airlines and uh, we, well, we, we work with them to make sure that the actual passengers uh, in distress, especially when you arrive and you find that your bag is missing. So, we work with the uh, uh, the ground handling agents to make sure that the experience uh, will be uh, minimized uh, at least to, to help them with the distress. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as far as heightened security, do you have your own security staff or do you work closely with the Singapore Police Force? Uh, we do have the airport police division that's working here and in addition, uh, of course, they, they do the law and order uh, mm -hmm. maintenance of, uh, of the airport. Uh, of course, when it comes to pre-port screening, we actually have an auxiliary police uh, team. Uh, it's at Certis Cisco, so they look, they look after the pre-port uh, security. Uh, so yes, we, we do make sure that the airport is, is safe. Of course, we have certain features that we put in to ensure that um, the Changi Airport is safe. Well, well, thank you so much, Mr. Okay. Chow. Thanks for being with us today. No problem. Yeah, thank, thank you so, you so much. much. Yes. And congratulations, and we look forward to Terminal 5. Thank you.